Uh, and thank you all for coming to attend or to just hear what I'm going to say uh, this afternoon. Uh, and I would like to thank the HMML for giving me this chance for the second time to come here, this friendly area, atmosphere, environment, and to research and to research and have some talk about my country, Ethiopia. And I also thank the College Ville Institute uh, for choosing me as one of its resident scholars, uh, which put me actually in a very warm uh, scholar platform, uh, out of which I'm, I'm learning a lot. Uh, I'm staying with and I'm, I'm grateful for the friendly scholars uh, and the staff members of the institute for their generous and gener generous generosity and hospitality. I would like to begin my presentation by showing you just a small clip, a very short clip. Uh, as you probably know, we Ethiopians are very, we have big name in the international athletics uh, uh, sport. And uh, we should be grateful to our heroes who run fast and won, won uh, medals just frequently for our country. This short clip shows what one of our contemporary runners did after she won the 5,000 women race at the last London Olympic. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I titled the clip as Teotokos Run and Won with Ethiopia at the London Olympics. Just very short clip. Yeah, in this group we have got three Ethiopian runners. The first one is named as uh, Runa Shtivaba and the second one is uh, Masarat Jafar and there is one another junior runner behind at the fourth place. And they are as usual fighting for the medal. <laughs> Yeah, somebody's going up and down. <laughs> it's normal. The third one is a Kenyan, very famous runner. Oh. Yeah, Masarath Dafar is going up. <laughs> yes, so we have got the medal the gold medal, and uh, comes the thing now, I mean, what I would like to show. So, here you go. Here is it. So this lady has to, had to run all the 25 laps by carrying the picture of Mary in her, uh, I don't know, bar. So, yeah. If I start this way, let me proceed and present my... This is my second time to read something on Ethiopia here at the friendly environment of St. John's University. Back in June, 2000, uh, in June 2010, I was blessed to obtain the Heckman stipend to come here and read about Andemta, Ethiopia's traditional commentary by the title. By the way, I forgot something. This is how the Catholic news agency reported this, this scene. Virgin Mary crosses the finish line <laughs> with Olympic gold runner. This was how they reported it. And it was, for us, it was really a very, very important moment. So back in 2010, uh, I got this Heckman stipend to come here and read about Andemta. Ethiopia's traditional commentary by the title Andemta, a veritable gold mine for Ethiopian studies and its inventory at HMML. 
By that time, I was a doctoral candidate at the University of Hamburg, Germany, working on this commentary tradition, so that I benefited much from that presentation. When I get the chance to come back again, this time as one of the Collegeville, Collegeville's Fall 2012 resident scholars and HMML researcher, I came with a title of presentation which is totally different from the one I had planned to deliver this evening. I submitted a title which sounds like Symbolism and Politics in the Architecture of Ethiopian Orthodox Church with a brief description about the objective and content of the presentation. Colleagues at the, at the HMML accepted my lecture proposal and started working with a poster to advertise it. Let me use this one. Uh, even Julie sent me this draft poster of my uh, for my confirmation. But on the way, I met the friendly father Killian, who is, who is here today. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> the friendly Father Killian, OSB, <laughs> at one of the Collegeville Institute Scholars Monday luncheons. And the, and the group had an impressive conversation about Virgin Mary, which forced me to change my mind. You remember Jeb and the, your wife, and we had that very interesting discussion. Father Killian told the group about how Virgin Mary is understood and adored by different Christians in different denominations and religious orientations. Father Kilian recounted how many positive perspectives he took from his four months of reading feminist theologians on Mary. After he detailed the long history of discrimination, not only in the post-biblical tradition, but in the very text of scripture itself, he recalled the dictum, I quote, never write a letter when you are angry, and indicated that for just and proper reasons, many feminist theologians are very angry. And it is through the prism of anger that many feminist theologians write their Mariologies. Father Killian quoted Sandra Schneider's that women have to come to terms with the maleness of Jesus Christ. Instead of elaborating Mariology within the context of Christology, where they are confronted with maleness of Jesus, Elizabeth Johnson moves to the context of non-gendered Holy Spirit. A spirit is neither female nor male. Or they move to the reign of God, which is also neither male nor female. Father Killian regrets this move away from Christology because the safeguard against an overdeveloped inflated, inflated Mariology is the Paul's dictum. I quote, there is one God, there is also one mediatory between God and humankind. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Neither the Holy Spirit nor the reign of God have mediatorial roles and therefore cannot provide the, the protection against at an inflated Mariology that Christology does. For this reason, a Mariology primarily situated in the Holy Spirit or the reign of God has no ecumenical future. The impetus for this discussion, therefore, was a research article Father Killian had written on feminist Mariologies, which a wife of a scholar asked her to see. Carla kindly made copies of the article for each of the scholars. After reading the article, I decided to change the topic of my lecture to how Ethiopians, we Ethiopians, ven venerate Mary. This I did because of my absolute feeling that it is so useful to speak about the Virgin Mary in, a, in, a, in an institute geographically situated on the grounds of a Catholic university and monastery, where monks sometimes pray to God through Virgin Mary and are always attentive to issues raised regarding her. The title of my speech is Theotokos in Ethiopia, the praise and adoration she enjoys in the nation. It is aimed at discussing the Marian devotion in the Christian land as it is evident in the people's lives today. I will begin with a brief, brief introduction about Ethiopia, followed by a short look at the theological basis for Mariology in the Ethiopian Orthodox context. Finally, I will discuss the Marian devotion as it is in the day pastoral life of the church and the people. Let me start with a brief introduction of Ethiopia, an ancient land in East Africa with long and rich history whose name is mentioned in the Bible for more than 40 times. Between the valley of the Upper Nile and the plains of Somaliland, 
rises a vast block, block of mountains, homeland of the Ethiopian people, bordered on the north by Eritrea, northwest by Sudan, on the south by Kenya, and on the southeast by Somaliland, Ethiopia stretched across 400,000 square miles, forming part of the structural unit known as the Horn of Africa. Praised for the, ab for the abundance of its gold, precious metals, and spices, ancient Ethiopia has sometimes been referred to as a land of milk and honey, whose diverse regions and climate contribute to the production of wheat and barley in the valleys. The pasturing of sheep, goats, and cattle on the lofty highland plateau, plateaus rising 9,000 feet and upwards. The cultivation of vineyard at 6,000 feet and to the harvesting of cotton, frankincense, and myrrh in the hot desert lowlands, abounding with an amazing variety of flora and fauna, as well as the much desired elephant, ivory, and ostrich plumes. Ancient, ancient Egypt, Egyptian explorers on expedition to Ethiopia's precious gold mines were often referred to the region as the land of Punt, or God's land, a land which at the time included all the countries between the Nile and the Red Sea, and between the equator and the Indian Ocean. According to traditional sources, early pagans worship, pagan worship existed in Ethiopia alongside of Judaism prior, prior to Christian, Christianity's entrance into the country. Christianity's earliest contact with Ethiopia dates back to apostolic times and is heralded in the New Testament with the baptism of the Ethiopian Enoch by the disciple Philip, as it is written in Acts chapter 8 from verse 26 to 40. Tradition also tells us that Ethiopian Christians were also have been present at Pentecost in Jerusalem. Although they are not mentioned by St. Luke in Acts, St. Chrysostom in his Epiphany homily mentions them expressly when he writes that the Ethiopians also understood the Holy Spirit. One of the three Magi from East who brought gifts to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at his nativity is believed to have, been from uh, to have been of Ethiopian origin, arriving from Saba, a place where the grandchildren of Ham settled the Queen of Sheba reigned. Uh, throughout the centuries, religious artists have faithfully portrayed one of the Magi with Ethiopian or dark-skinned complex. Furthermore, tradition hold, holds that the Apostle Matthew preached the gospel in Ethiopia and baptized the Ethiopian king, Egyptos. During the fourth century, however, Christianity was expanded and officially established as Ethiopia's state religion. Beginning in the royal court, the Christian faith gradually penetrated among the lives of common people, where it played an integral, integral role in all aspects of national life. The birth of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tohado Church as a state church took place at a time when the Aryan heresy was at, at its peak. Today in Ethiopia, there are over 800 monasteries serving as, as, as sources of Orthodox teaching and storehouse of both the religious and historical heritage of the country. Without the ex existence of these ascetical centers, the growth of Christianity in Ethiopia would have been severely, severely limited. Theotokos occupies a unique place in the Ethiopian Orthodox Tohadu Church. Her intercession is continually sought, as evidenced by the common prayer of supplication. Our Lady Mary, Mother of God, offer up our prayer that our sins may be forgiven. She pleads for the human race. According to the teachings of our church, she was prepared by the Holy Ghost to deliver Jesus Christ. We honor, honor the Blessed Virgin Mary preeminently for the supreme grace and call which she received from God to be the mother of our Lord. Therefore, she is praised as Our Lady, holy, blessed, and exalted. She is loved by her son so dearly that he will grant her every prayer. Because of the mission which she re uh, received from God, the Virgin's life is most closely linked with the mysteries of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is none who has followed in the footsteps of the incarnate word of God more faithfully than she. Holier than the cherubim and seraphim, they enjoy, she enjoys greater, greater glory than all God's creatures. 
for she is full of grace, the very mother of God who gave birth to our, to our Redeemer. For us, she is a glorified human soul, more perfect than any other. She is worthy of the highest place and honor that a creature can attain. God has cho chosen her among all women to be his mother. He has bestowed upon her his abundant grace and grace, and she has kept that grace in faithfulness and love. Yet in no, in no sense do the members of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawadu Church regard the Virgin Mary as a fourth member of the Holy Trinity, nor do they assign to her the worship due to God alone. Mary is not very venerated in isolation, but in relation to our Lord Jesus Christ. The reverence shows, shown to her, far from eclipsing the worship of God, has exactly the opposite effect. The more Mary is esteemed, the more vivid is the awareness of the majesty of her, her son, Jesus Christ. It is precisely on account of the son that Christians venerate the mother of God. Okay, let me jump some paragraphs because... Teotokos has a special place in our tradition, life, and culture. Sacred devotional writings and comp compositions in honor of the Virgin Mary are abound. Some of them are translated, and most literatures are indigenous. Most of these literatures are exhibited here in the Himmel, which is very interesting. Praise and adoration of Mary find expression through different liturgical services and in the people's day-to-day -day life. It is impossible to list all the expressions in this lecture, but I will try to share with you a few of the main ones. <coughs> Let us begin with Theotokos' place in our liturgical practice. Let me begin by sharing with you about our tradition that Mary visited us in her journey to Egypt, carrying her son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and accomp accompanied by his foster father, Joseph. It is written in the Bible that she visited, the flight was to Egypt, but we, in, according to our tradition, she visited us too. And according to our tradition, it was then that Jesus Christ gave our country to her as a teacher. By coincidence, we are in the season when we remember her tiresome journey carrying her son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On Sundays, every church gives a special overnight service of chanting. Most of the verses remind the flight of Virgin Mary together with her child. Anybody who is interested to watch how we uh, uh, venerate Mary during this season, he or she can go to one of the churches in Minneapolis because a very long and attractive uh, ritual is going on there every Saturday. Around Saturday midnight, the clergy of a parish joined by a large number of lay people gather in the church, and they sing the whole night until the Sunday Mass starts. The, the verses of the song are usually taken from two hymnographic books, which are the essential parts of the, the Matins of Sundays. During this season, during this season, namely Mahaleta Sege, Hymn of the Flower, and Sakok Our Dingle, Lamentation of the Virgin. After Mass, Sege Misa, a meal served during the season, is delivered by the people to the priest who presided the whole night. It is a faithful who live in the vicinity of the parish who prepare the food. We venerate and praise Mary, the mother of God, in the, in the many Marian feasts of the Ethiopian calendar. There are 33 prescribed feasts com commemorating the Virgin Mary alone as well as a number of unprescribed feasts observed in her honor. Many of the feasts in honor of our Lord Jesus Christ are also regarded as feasts honoring Saint Mary. For example, the Annunciation, Christmas, and the presentation in the temple. Most Marian feasts celebrate, celebrate events in the life of the Virgin Mary. Such celebrations take the form of chants of prayer and supplication and hymn, hymns of gratitude, love, and praise. Central to the devotion of Mary is her holy icon, which stands in the Holy of Holies near the icon of her son in almost every Ethiopian church across the country. The icons which tradition attributes to, attributes to St. Luke's crafts, craftsmanship are particularly revered by the faithful. One of the icons painted by St. Luke is the icon of Virgin Mary. While several churches and monasteries in Europe, I don't know 
if there are people or churches who claim to obtain this uh, icon in, in America, but in Europe claim to possess icon of Virgin Mary painted by St. Luke. Such claims are also made by a number of ancient monasteries and churches of the Ethiopian highlands. To the people of surrounding countryside, the icon of Virgin Mary is a powerful source of religious healing, hope, and divine presence. It even employed for intercession in times of flood, drought, and disease. Carried in the arm of a monk, priest, or deacon, it is taken around the, around the outside of the church and held up as a blessing. While the icon is raised in the air, clergy and congreg congregation antiphonally chants, Lord, have mercy upon us. As the threat of a widespread epidemic or crop failure, the procession of the icon of Holy Mir Virgin Mary and of other patron saints is commonly carried out by the clergy around the country. The icon of St. Luke is generally referred to with special designations such as El Adeno, the saving picture, which defines the icon's power to heal and be bestow grace. During the entire procession, the debtors perform a sacred dance and the whole congregation sings and chants in joyful acclamation while prostrating and bowing before the Ark of the Covenant and the icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This pro prostration is an expression of respect and honor, not worship. It is likened to Moses' prostration before the Ark of the Covenant with its mercy seat, decorated with the two cherubim of gold, and God spoke to Moses. The procession continues to the churchyard around the church building three times without interruption. It is a beautiful celebration of joy, praise, and thanksgiving for the grace of God and the favor of the Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary, Mother of God, is the most reverent, revered and is known by several other names in the local tradition, including Kidanamrat, Lidata, Covenant, her nativity, her presentation, Kuskwam, and the name of uh, Kuskwam is the name of the place in Upper Egypt, where the Holy Family sojourned during the flight into Egypt. So we call her Kidanamrat one time and Lidata other time, Bata and Kuskwam. Virgin Mary has a special place in personal pity and public life. One of the expression is through names. It is difficult to find among Ethiopian Christian, Christians a family in which daughters or sons have not been given the sweet name of Mary. So highly esteemed is she. Children often named Waletta or Walda Maria, the daughter or the son of Mary, Gabra or Amata Maria, the servant of Mary, La Aka Maria, the messenger of Mary, Fikrta or Fikra Maria, the love of Mary, Kidana Maria, the mercy of Mary. Here in this room now, we, we, we are, there are three Ethiopians. My, including myself, Professor Getacho and his wife, Uzoro Misrag, and myself. Out of us, three, two of us have this name. My name is Olda Maria, and Professor Getacho's uh, baptismal name is Sahala Maria. So we have got this name, in, it's regular. I mean, often uh, people carry her name in their baptismal names. Mary has a special place in a woman's house in her maternal bed. When the date of delivery approaches, she is encouraged to read prayer books which are dedicated to Mary for a safe delivery, while others wish her for a safe delivery with the famous wishful sign, Mariam Tedavsish, meaning may Mary touch you, touch you to deliver safe. They also wish her Mariam Chenshin Tamuko, meaning may Mary warm up your lap, which the letter, which actually is used in some places as a formula of coincidence, condolence said to a woman whose baby has just died. Hospital births are still unpopular in, part of, in much part of Ethiopia. In rural, rural Ethiopia, a mother can hardly find a hospital where she can get professional assistant, assistance to deliver her baby. For her, according to tradition, the doctor helping the expectant mother is Mary. When a woman gets pregnant, she is officially understood as the one who is in the hands of Virgin Mary, she is in Mary's hand. At the time of delivery, neighboring women gather in her house and pray, calling the name of the Virgin Mary, saying, Mary, 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 Mary. 
It's a prayer so that the expectant mother will find consolation in the virgin's tender heart during her travel. They also give her Yamariam Zang, Mary's stick, a small stick which a woman in labor holds in the hand until the child is born. When she delivers, they praise Mary singing the famous Mariam Natach, Nidrasmus Ganach, Idrasishmus Ganach, Rertesh Allen. If my mother was here, she could perform it well. But I can tell you the translation. Mary, our mother, may you accept our praise. For you help our sister, may you accept our praise. They and other visitor of the new mother, who is officially got the name until the 14th day, 14th day in the case of the newborn is a baby boy and eight is for a baby girl called Yemariam Aras, a, a woman of Mary in childbed. Congratulate her in the name of the Holy Virgin, saying, Nkwan Mariam Marechish. Congratulations that Mary has mercy upon you. The joyful gathering prepares a special food made during delivery called Yemariam Gamfo, a porridge served during a woman's delivery, just a special porridge, and shares it with the new mother and visitors. When they leave the house filled with joy, they wish the new mother and her child all the best, saying, Mariam Bashilim Tautash, may Mary treat you well till you go out of your bed, and wish her Mary be her entertainer or jester in maternal bed, saying, Mariam, Mariam Tachautish, may Mary entertain you. Mary's existence in that house of a new mother continues. If the newborn baby is found circumcised naturally, the newborn baby boy is found circumcised naturally, he is called Yamariam Girs, one who is circumcised by Mary. If a black spot, birthmark, is found somewhere on his or her body, he is said to be a blessed baby who is kissed by Mary, as that black spot is believed to be a Mary's kiss mark. When the newborn is baptized, it is mostly the case for him, to her or, uh, for him or her to carry Mary's name as his baptismal name, like the, most, uh, like the ones we listed above. The rural mother has a strong belief that her child will not be hurt, though he may fall down from the bed, because there is a strong tradition that if a newborn child falls from bed, Mary will spread something out for him to soften the fall. The adoration and respect of Mary is also strong in the ecclesiastical school life. A student with no means of support attending school in local monastery earn his daily food by appealing to the people of nearby villages chanting the name of the Holy Virgin Mary, saying, meaning, I beg you in the name of Mary, who is the protector of the world. Similarly, the poor beg their daily bread in the name of the blessed Virgin Mary, saying, in the name of the Mother of the Lord. One could say that it is the love and kindness embodied in the Virgin Mary that feeds the hungry in the country of Ethiopia. Ethiopia Christians emphasize that were it not for the blessed, the blessed Virgin Mary, salvation would not have come into this world and the hope of humanity would be without hope. Our devo devotion and praise to Mary is also expressed through our understanding of nature. As the scripture tells us, after the flood, God placed a rainbow in the sky as a sign of his covenant with Noah to never again destroy the earth and all living creatures by flood. We call the rainbow as Yamariam Makanat, Mary's belt. Of course, we have an explanation for that. And that is, as God gave Noah the rainbow as a sign of his everlasting covenant, that he never again will destroy the earth by flood. He gave us our mother Mary as the new covenant that he will never let us live in the yoke of Satan like we were during the Old Testament time. There are also plenty of wild beasts who are called after Mary, Yemariam Ferris, Lady Buggy, Yemariam Of, a small sparrow sized bird which has blue feathers except on the ventral area where the plumage is green, Yemariam Zer, a variety of white sorghum. Mary had a big place in the heart and thoughts of Ethiopian emperors. Emperor David 
which was rendered during the 14th century, late 14th, 15th century, beginning of uh, 15th century, was one of the medieval emperors who was responsible for the giant step forward that the worship of Mary took, the, took in Ethiopia during the 14th and 15th centuries. His wife, Queen, Queen Exikabra, attributed to the blessed virgin the birth and growth of her children. Miscarriages and infant days had been serious problems in the royal family until they were brought to an end by the intercession of the blessed, the blessed Virgin Mary. It is recorded in, book, in the book of the miracle of Mary that he once issued a declaration. This, this was translated by Professor Getacho. I took it from one of his plenty works on Mary and uh, our, our history. I quote, King David loved Our Lady, the holy twofold virgin, Mary, the mother of God with all his might. He himself chanted her praise in church on all her holy days and regard, regaled the poor by giving alms in the, in the name of Our Lady, the holy twofold virgin Mary, the mother of God. When his heart was aflame with her love, he issued a decree saying, if there is anyone who utters the name of Our Lady, the holy twofold Virgin Mary, the mother of God, in swearing or in any vain matter, other than to praise her and to take refuge in her. Let his tongue be cut out, cut out through the back of his neck. Emperor Zariagov, the son of Emperor Dawit, was also another fanatic devotee of the Virgin. He is credited for Mary's prominence in Ethiopian Christianity. It was he who ordered the observance in her honor of most of the 33 feasts, uh, feast days in the liturgical year. I'm, I'm working on Ethiopian feasts, so uh, this is one of the important sources I have. He also ordered the reading of her miracles, which number in the hundreds at church services, along with related spiritual readings. Furthermore, he imported from the famous church in Alexandria a Marian ritual that was to be carried out before reading the miracle assigned for the day. I don't know how many of you know that our country, Ethiopia, is the only African country which was not colonized by Europeans who once scrambled Africa. The Italians tried us around the second half of the 19th century, but the zealous Ethiopians defended their country under the leadership of the Emperor Minilik, who was baptized as Salem Ariam and crowned at the Church of St. Mary on Mount Ntoto. The key word the emperor used to mobilize his people to stand against the invaders was the name of Mary. As it is documented in different places, the emperor, as most of his predecessors, had high regard for the Virgin Mary and used to mention her name in most of his speeches. And he constructed lots of church, churches dedicated to her and encouraged others to do the same. When the Italians invaded the country from the north, northern direction, the emperor summoned his people to stand firm against the fascist, fascists and vowed in the name of Mary that he would not have mercy for those who do not take seriously their duty to defend their country. It is the Ethiopian tradition that one should not say, here I am, I wait, especially during evenings when someone out of his sight calls him or her name. Because it is in the tradition that Satan may call someone to deprive his spirituality or even, or even kill him. When this happens, the being called is advised to answer, I'm grinding Mary's barley, which is used in brewing the local beer. Allah. In conclusion, this Marian practice may seem expressive, excessive to some, but I assure you that the central role of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is in no way diminished. We praise Virgin Mary because she is Theotokos, the mother of our Lord. We pray to her son, Jesus Christ, through her. Thank you for your kind attention. So I think, yeah. Yeah, Professor Getacho. Just to add something, I hope. 
not to ask me. Yes, I think so, right, because uh, we, there are people who are in love with, with Virgin Mary and they are really strong against uh, the Protestants. So uh, our attention, our devotion to Mary uh, might contribute something to stand against the Protestants. Uh, because, not because we love her, but because they tell us that we are worshiping Mary instead of Jesus Christ. But the fact is, as I said in my paper, we worship Jesus. We pray to Jesus through Mary. We are not praying to Mary. We pray to Jesus Christ. So uh, b because of this offensive, you know, offensive talks from the other side, our members are really, we have plenty of uh, experiences, even fighting happened because of this thing. So I think, yes, you can add, Professor. Yeah, but you are the right person, Professor, to, to speak about that because he produced plenty of works on that. Yes, you are right. As, as you uh, mentioned uh, to me, there are a lot of things to be added in this, in this talk, in this paper, when it, it comes to be, I mean, something to be published somewhere. Uh, but as you said, the Stefano Seitz movement is, is one important part of this talk. It should be. But for, for some explanation, I think you are the right person to, to tell this group, this crowd, because you are the, the one who worked much on this part of our history. Can you? Just, you asked me and I'm asking you, Professor, just to say something about it. Now? Yes, now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now. And in a way, you, you will save me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor. Steve. And I've been surprised that the icons uh, reflect such a light skin color of, of male Jesus. I expect that in Europe, but not so much in Ethiopia. I just wonder what, why do you think that is? Because certainly they're not mid Middle Eastern. Yeah, perhaps. This is not, by the way, this is. This picture is not ours. I mean, this is not the traditional icon of uh, Mary, according the to. Older ones also look yeah. Like um, yeah. Let's see. I mean, uh, but most of our uh, icons are not white. I mean, here you go. Except this one. I don't know this one. Most of the. Perhaps it, it might be lightened because of the light, but when you see the actual icons, they are a little darker. Okay. So, and actually there is, a, there is a movement. You may know that the Rastafarians, the, the, the Jamaican people, are highly uh, connected with Ethiopia. And they are against these this pictures like this 
we should make Mary and Jesus Christ black, not white. So uh, because of the light, I think, but most of the icons are uh, dark and not white, like the Greeks and the Europeans, rather. Yeah. You know, as you were speaking, I was thinking about growing up and how much devotion to Mary was such a huge part that my grandma and mom taught me, you know, falling asleep with holding rosaries and the different statues that we put out at different times, the novenas that we had to say, and thinking to me and my brother now that we don't practice any of that, and I think that's very common among a lot of people in my generation in the United States that we no longer practice a lot of the devotions we were taught. And I'm curious, in Ethiopia, do you see any young adults or teens, do these devotions remain strong or are they lessened? Yeah, I take, uh, as I observe, it remains strong. It remains strong. You find, you find different children games. They play by mentioning her name and her deeds and, and so on. So we still are highly affiliated with, with, with Virgin Mary and the young especially. And we are getting really very fanatic, uh, perhaps like the 14th century, 15th century uh, emperors. Very fanatic young people in Ethiopia who, are, who want to preserve the tradition. And they are moving really against them. I'm happy that I'm part of them. So. As you, as you said, it's still strong. It remains strong. Now, Father Killian. I was just touching on this point. Uh, I think it's quite true that a number of uh, young people uh, of her generation uh, uh, don't belong to Mary and I. But the research has been made shows that there's another stream among uh, young people, and they are going back. They don't have, they didn't have the kind of hang-up that uh, her generation had. <laughs> and, so they, they go, and they want to go back and retrieve this Marian piety. But it's not only Marian piety, it's devotional life in general. Is 
there any dialogue? Is there the dialogue a, a possibility? Does it happen at a scholarly level, um, if not at a grassroots level? Just curious to see where, have your thoughts on where things are actually going. Yeah, yeah, thank you. By the way, I would like to have her number, that, that, that uh, the student's number. Um, yes, there, there is an ongoing dialogue in between the elders. We have got one forum, forum for dialogue among you know, religious leaders or so. It, I know it's in Amharic, but uh, so they, they, they usually uh, have uh, meetings every, every other month and uh, twice per three months rather. So it's going on well, but you know, we are getting problems, uh, especially because of this Muslim Islam, Islam extreme uh, fanatic Islams. They don't want to see this dialogue happening in Ethiopia, uh, because if, if we sit together and try to discuss our problems, our, our common problems, especially social problems, as you know, Ethiopia is a very poor country, uh, they think that they lose. It's not, actually, it's not logical. Uh, but for your question, we have got one, one forum, forum for these elder people to discuss about uh, some ec ecumenical issues. And at the youth level also, we are trying to form a kind of forum uh, to discuss with, uh, with, with among ourselves about our common problems. And mostly for the Christians, our common problem in Ethiopia is Islam. Because they, they think that, you know, some people call Ethiopia island of Christianity. Island of Christianity. Because all the neighboring countries are Islam nations. They are Islam. So the only Christian country with a strong tradition and history of Christianity is Ethiopia. So they want to convert this nation, the whole nation, into Islam. So if we come together and discuss, that's what we are looking for now. I mean, we are trying to sit together and discuss how to preserve our Christian, Christian faith and element in the country. So we have at the youth level, perhaps at the grassroots level, and at the, at the elders or leaders level. So we have got this. Did I, did I answer your question? That was a great start to my, yeah, to the <laughs> Good. There are many questions I have on that topic, but thank you very much. Yeah. I think the point, can you speak a little bit more in terms of the icons and terms of how they tend to be used? Um, popular devotion as well as what's going on in the church and in the Orthodox tradition is, is broad and, and huge. But um, I, I'm curious in terms of the sources for the Ethiopian Yeah, I, I wish to have some more icons. We have our own traditional, uh, you know, icons. I mean, traditional way of representing a saint or, or God. With big eyes, Professor Getacho can help me on that too. Uh, big eyes. And, and mostly we play really a very important uh, game with colors too. So uh, we have our own unique unique traditional uh, painting system. And uh, the application we hung, you know, we, we put on the walls. If you get into a church in Ethiopia, an Orthodox church, you find plenty of icons uh, throughout the walls in the church. So, uh, and actually uh, we have these canons. Mary should be, uh, put in the eastern direction and the, the, the angels in the west and, and, so, and so forth. So we have our own traditional painting system, one, and we use them to just get inspired, I mean to get meditated, to get the meditation uh, to, uh, during our worship. And as I said, when something happens in Ethiopia, very strange thing, we, we make use of the power they have, which might be questioned, actually. John. Interesting art question, but it's my understanding is that in Russia, there are some uh, famous artists, people who have sort of risen to the top of the icon in some of their pantheon. Are there, are there artists here who are particularly important and whose work is, I 
a standard or a, the higher standard? Yeah, yeah. We have, we have uh, some, some very important painters whose work are, are serving, works are serving as models. And they are living else, anywhere in the country, in the south, north, mid, uh, in the center, and so on. So we have, uh, we have plenty of traditional painters. And uh, as I said, the standard is one has to, uh, the, the saint has, should, has, should have this big eye. And there are some, some elements in the painting too, in the colors, the usage of colors too. Another question, are, are you seeing Ethiopian presence there? In other words, is this an Ethiopian name? Yes. Yes, for example, I don't, I don't think that this Mary, this icon, this picture, is, is from somewhere else outside Ethiopia. This is typical, am I right, Professor? This is a typical Ethiopian, uh, by the way, this too. I mean, the, 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 the thing is, with big eyes, I don't think that we have uh, big eyes in other traditions. The big eyes and mostly, if it if the pain if if it is a an angel, his face should be like a child, like just a very small baby, because because of some some interpretations actually. So, Ethiopian paintings are different; they have really unique elements. Yeah, Father Killer. <laughs> yeah, contemplation and power, power of that, uh, that uh, saint, and yeah, of course, contemplation can be considered, but, but we mostly say that the power, the power of that saint is expressed through that big eye, because he has all the power in the world to do uh, what's best or, or good. Uh, may Professor Getach add on something on this? Um, I think uh, many uh, who visited Ethiopia say Ethiopians have big eyes, and the painters are reproducing that uh, uh, on, on, on the picture of the saints, that's what I think. Uh, regarding the reproduction of the pictures, from the, the pictures come, of course, from Yeah, perhaps, I mean, now officially we are autonomous. Right. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church is an autonomous church. But for 1,600 years, as you know, uh, we were getting our archbishop. We were under the Coptic Orthodox Church in Alexandria. But now, in about 50 years, we are autonomous. But still the religious, this is spiritual connection is there. And perhaps it needs some, some thorough study, I mean, to compare our, our icons with the, that of the Egyptians. 
but still we have uh, that connection. Yeah, Adam. No, it's all, it's all, I mean, there is no difference. There is no difference. But what, during that delivery, women are more engaged, involved in calling her name. And normally, according to the culture I know, they, the, the man, especially the husband of the woman, should leave the place and go somewhere and pray. pray. Uh, he, he is not allowed to, to observe what is going on there. So basically it is the same, the devotion, the ritual, we, we, we do both the same. Any more? Okay. 